How's it going, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? My name is Prodigy, and welcome to another video on the channel. Today, guys, we're going to be covering more of the Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultimania. This time, we're going to be covering the scenario mystery section of the Tetsuo Nomura interviews. Last video, the last couple of videos, we covered the main Nomura interviews, which covers your more general surface level information you can get from Kingdom Hearts 2 a little bit more in-depthly, while the scenario mysteries covers more of the lore that we kind of talk about here on this channel. Now, this scenario mystery section is not nearly as long as even Chain of Memories or Kingdom Hearts 1's, so this video might be a little bit on the shorter side, maybe, or maybe it might be average length. We're going to be covering all the scenario mysteries in one video, though that doesn't mean this will be the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, because right after this, we're going to be covering the Final Mix version of the book that came out, which has completely different and separate interviews, talking about the Final Mix version of Kingdom Hearts 2 that released a year after. But let's go ahead ahead and get right into this. When was Organization 13 founded? The timing is when Philosopher Ansem's six disciples turned into Heartless. The 13th organization is called like that just because it has recruited 13 members, but it doesn't matter if it has 13 in its name or not. All 13 members were already gathered in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, but the members that were in Castle Oblivion still called it as the organization. Besides Xehanort, the other five disciples that turned into Heartless disappear? Not really disappear, but more like they're somewhere else as normal Heartless. Xehanort was about the only one who was able to keep a human form. In the beginning of the game, there is a conversation between Xemnas and Roxas that went like, I met him, he looks just like you. Who are you? At the beach in the world of darkness. Did this happen right after Sora's fight with the enigmatic man in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix? Right after? I'm not sure about that, but... Yes, it's after that. In this game, it was never stated that Xemnas was the enigmatic man in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, but from the way he fights in his line, he looks just like you. I hinted that it was him in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Okay, so right off the bat, they actually talk about something that I have been wondering about constantly, though I figured this was the answer. The other five disciples that Ansem has in Yenzo, Luxeus, Zaldin, etc. weren't really turned into crazy heartless like Ansem was. He was so powerful that he was able to keep his human form, or rather Xehanort. You knew what Ansem I was talking about though. But they were just regular Heartless. But their nobodies were able to keep their human forms, which is very interesting. I wonder if he explains later in the interview how exactly, though I doubt it. But moving along, Roxas asked for Xemnas' name, so does that mean that scene shows him meeting Xemnas for the first time, and that's when he joined the organization? Not really. It's true that he had a conversation with Xemnas at that beach before, but that's not their first meeting and their conversation wasn't like that either. The conversation at the beginning of the game was Roxas's dream, mixed with his memories and feelings. The part where he asked for Xemnas' name, but instead was asked back for his real name, was a reflection of Roxas's feelings on who he really is. Roxas didn't know his real name, remember? If he remembered that he was Sora, I think he wouldn't join the organization in the first place. Did Nominee meet Diz after Sora's story in Chain of Memories? Yes, they contacted each other between Sora and Riku's stories. Naminé cooperated with Diz not just because she's against the organization, but also because she wanted to protect Sora. She promised to restore Sora's memories, so she needed to stay beside him. As stated in Ansem's other report, number 10, Diz thought it's dangerous to leave Sora in Castle Oblivion in order to protect Sora. Naminé needed Diz. Was the mansion in Twilight Town a property of the Organization 13? No, they have nothing to do with it. It's just the place Diz used as his hideout. You saw a lot of pods like the one Sora was in, but Diz just transferred Sora and the others along with their pods from Castle Oblivion. In other words, Diz just copied the pods that were created by the organization and lined them up in the mansion. The reason there was a room in the mansion that looks exactly like Castle Oblivion was it just prepared for Nomine, not because that space is connected to Castle Oblivion. I'm surprised they even talked about that in this Ultimania. Wow, because we theorized about that a lot to this day and I'm sure that there's probably more to it nowadays because I'm sure Nomura didn't have key even in concept around Kingdom Hearts 2 at least I don't think unless he's that crazy but to be honest though 
he did leave room open for a possible like inclusion of who was in those other pods because he doesn't straight up debunk that other people are in there in these you saw a lot of pods like the one sora was in but Diz just transferred sora and the others along with their pods from castle oblivion the others being down and goofy in other words Diz just copied the pods that were created by the organization and lined them up so what he's essentially trying to say here is that he just copied the pods he just basically took everything not just Sora Dawn and Goofy just everything copied into that room and the room for Namine I, I really like that little detail that they clarify that it's not something super connected to Castle Oblivion but rather just a safe space for Namine Oh, it does gave Namine her own little room. It's nice. Okay, I'm really liking this so far. Scenario Mysteries uh, never disappoints. Please tell us a bit more about the Twilight Town Roxas was in. From Ansem's other report, number 12, there's the line, For the moment, I have converted all of Twilight Town into data and formed a copy of that world in Sora's memories. The Twilight Town Roxas was in is the data of the real Twilight Town. Inside a computer the pod Sora sleeps in is connected to a computer and in that computer is the data of that world and the 13 organization hacked into the computer. It's not that Axel went to Sora's brain, it's actually that the nobodies invaded the world that's in the computer that Sora's brain is accessing. That sounds way more convoluted than it probably actually is. What he's basically saying is that there's a world inside of a computer and the organization hacked the computer that the world is in. That's basically what they said. To simplify it a little bit. We found out that Riku's Keyblade name is weighted on when examining his item slots after he joined your party. Is that Keyblade a transfigured version of Soul Eater? I designed it with that image. Since Riku has always been using Soul Eater, he still calls it that even after it changed form. Keyblades aren't something that you can obtain suddenly out of nowhere, so, okay, I can't even read that with a straight face. Anyways, reading on. So, in Riku's case, his Soul Eater was used as an intermediary for that Keyblade. Okay, the reason I was fumbling for a minute was because Keyblades aren't something that you can obtain suddenly out of nowhere. When I read that, I was just thinking immediately to Sora's scene, Kairi's scene, Lee kind of got a Keyblade out of nowhere too, though I know not to take that literally, like the literal appearance of the Keyblade isn't out of nowhere. It's usually like a big buildup of emotions, a big buildup of one's heart, and then the Keyblade manifests. But it's, it's just funny thinking about it in context because when you look at the scenes, like at surface value, it's like, it looks like, okay, well, they just randomly got their Keyblade. Kyrie definitely randomly got her Keyblade. But for the other characters, that's what it looks like. Though for Riku, though, I do have to admit, uh, he, he did like kind of casually move his way up to having a Keyblade. If we directly translate way to dawn dawn means in between night and daytime so does that mean that keyblade is from the in-between world in other words this means the keyblades that sora king mickey and riku wield represent the worlds of light dark and in between Ooh, the meaty questions well if i have to say where they belong it's just as you said, but the name of Way to Dawn doesn't have to mean that. This name came from the scene at the end of Riku's story in Chain of Memories that suggested which path he would walk on, where he said, the road to dawn. Okay, so he doesn't confirm Riku has the realm of in-between Keyblade. No one has that, I guess, yet. In Ansem's other report, number 13, Diz had the unanswered question, how did Xehanort open the door in Hollow Bastions underground? I can't talk about this yet. But, well, it's something you can speculate over, I think. Speaking of opening the door, I'm going to move the subject to the previous game. Why, when Riku opened Destiny Island's door, this accidentally called the darkness? Do the powers of Keyblade wielders that are called Heroes of Light are connected to darkness? Currently, Sora and Ko are the only Keyblade wielders, and they're doing things that grant them the titles Heroes of Light. But, as stated in the first games, and some report number 8 and the secret movie, this time, the real Keyblade wielders can bring chaos to the world just as one can bring peace to it. In the world that never was, Zigbar said to Sora, compared to the ones before this, you're weaker. Does that mean he's comparing Sora to previous Keyblade wielders before him? Yes, he was. I was hinting Zigbar has met other Keyblade wielders before as something more than that. I'll leave it to your imagination. Oh my gosh, the Zigbar hints were all the way back then too. That's crazy. I'm kind of surprised at uh, some of the things he talked about here because some of these things have been questions by the community for 
years and he doesn't give direct answers to all of them but he does at least acknowledge those things and it does give people a little bit more weight behind some of their theories some of their questions and whatnot which i like that's a big reason i'm also doing this because i know a lot of the ultimania interviews are kind of just left out there and they're not really publicized all that much so i'm trying my best to publicize them a little bit but of course though shout out to cage insider for translating these in the first place these have been translated for years and years and years so if you want to go ahead and read ahead or read these like yourself please go ahead and check them out link in the description below as always and they don't just have ultimania stuff they have stuff from like the whole series like usually any nomura interview that pertains to kingdom hearts that you might be interested in is likely translated on this website along with the kingdom hearts union cross updates they're one of the big people that translate those updates as well so uh yeah the funniest thing about the scenario mysteries is how much they went in between titles like at the beginning they were talking a lot about stuff that happened in chain of memories and then towards the end they asked a question pertaining to kingdom hearts one i like how the interviewer seems to genuinely be someone who's like super into kingdom hearts i wonder like who the interviewer is like that's why i'm wondering at this point we all know who nomura is who is this interviewer maybe nomura just gets like a random developer like from the team uh who's like helping write the story who's helping like develop the game to like ask these questions maybe that's what's going on and i also love how the zigbar hints were there even way back then dude uh this is something i could have put in those two videos i made about the hints about the epilogue or lushu i actually have a video uh coming out about another character uh similar to those so be excited for that but after this ultimate i think we're going to be covering days because you guys chose this over days originally i was going to do days before kingdom hearts 2s but you guys told me to basically just go and release order and that that's what I'm doing, I guess. So, yeah. But anyways, though, thank you guys so much for coming out to today's video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Share the video with a friend or a family member. And last but not least, if you have not already and want to become a part of the union, all you have to do is hit that red little subscribe button down below. My name is Prodigy, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.